Welcome to the New Process Podcast. Learn all the tools, methods, and best practices combined with people, e- emotions, and a, and a human-centric mindset to rethink your process and push it to the next level. Uh, level. And, here, and, here, and here is your host, Marco Kloppenberg. Yeah, welcome to episode 35 of the New Process Podcast. I'm back from a super relaxing vacation in Austria and Italy, and... I already worked on some cool things, which I'm going to reveal in the course of this episode. I hope you also enjoyed your summer break so that we can now start with new energy to rethink processes. Today, I'm finally going to learn what UPN, the Universal Process Notation, is all about and how it supports a human-centric BPM approach. Therefore, I've invited UPN's co-inventor, Walter Brill, to the podcast. Walter developed UPN back in the beginnings of the 2000s with a number of co-workers at Nimbus, which was later acquired by Tipco. Before joining Nimbus, Walter worked as process consultant for several companies in the Netherlands. Today, he is customer success manager at elements.cloud, which can also be used to map process in UPN. Walter lives in Nuut, located in the southern Netherlands, which is quite close to the German border and not far away from Aachen. On LinkedIn, he titles himself as a process knowledge nerd. So I think he's perfect to discuss the topic of notations here today. So enjoy the interview with Walter Brill. And now, let's start to rethink processes. Yeah, welcome to the new process podcast, Walter. I'm super curious to finally learn more about UPN. So welcome, Walter. Well, thank you for having me, Mirko. This is great to be in your podcast. Yeah, it was just a matter of time, I suppose. But then, you know, we're all very busy. And uh, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, yeah, you're my first guest after the summer break. And okay. I, this is driving me even more motivated to learn more about UPN. So just coming back from a relaxed vacation in Italy and uh, now okay. UPN today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Let's check right into our flight today. What do you prefer in an aircraft, aisle or window seat? Okay, long haul, always uh, window seat, because then I can put my head, you know, uh, a little more to the, to the window. But short flights, always aisle. <laughs> yeah, I do it the same way. That's, that's a very good approach, I think. And what is your favorite airport? To be honest, uh, that has been Frankfurt for a long time. And no. The reason- Yeah, yeah, and I will tell you why. Because I ha- I was working for SAP for a long time, uh, and I had to fly every single week to Frankfurt, and then sort of drive uh, to Waldorf, uh, yeah, you know, every week. And as people started to know me, because you know it happens that you were every week there, so the uh, the Hertz guys they said, "Hey, Mr. Brill, uh, welcome, uh, and so weiter, and so weiter," uh, and uh, they knew me, so that was really cool. And then they sometimes gave me a really cool car, which is really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but then also the uh, the launch, the launch, sorry, the launch, the launch uh, guys knew me as well. So I had because I fly a lot, uh, you have lounge access, and that was just so relaxing. So the most relaxing experience was actually in Frankfurt. Now, from a shall I say normal airport experience, as in like not being in a lounge, that would be probably a different airport. So that- <laughs> Fine. I mean, that would uh, maybe Schiphol Airport because it has so much uh, shoppings and stuff like that, and there's, there's so much things to do. But yeah, but but from Frankfurt, from a for for a more like relaxing, you know, situation, I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's always very calm. You know, there's not, not many people. I, oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's that's an interesting perspective because I was flying to Frankfurt for years. Sometimes I shouldn't tell that twice a week. And the security is just um, not very lean. <laughs> and uh, that, that was always a little bit exciting <laughs> to get to the aircraft on time. Uh, especially That's also why I, I prefer Schiphol a little bit more because I'm also a premium member. So basically uh, around security, but especially for cross boarding, you know, I just had to go, you don't, don't have to stand in rows. So you had always priority, which... <laughs> which is always nice. I have a little, I don't know if it fits in the, in the podcast, but I have a little anecdote there. So I have this, this little card, you know, the premium card. Yeah. And I traveled um, about years ago, I traveled first class, well, first of all, business class or something from, from States to, to, to Amsterdam. And there, <laughs> there was a whole group of, shall we say, pretty spoiled uh, people. They didn't want to really walk from the gate to, you know, so they, they ordered a car, you know, that is, so they didn't have to walk. I don't know if they had any, I think they didn't have anything on the, no, any disabilities or something, but they were just sort of lazy. But very, you know, portion wall, you know. Then uh, I went, yeah, whatever. And so I went 
walking. And then, of course, it was a 7 for 7 so it was a huge, huge show. Then then this this magic thing happened. Me in my sort of jeans, you know, and, and sort of wasted clothes. I'm sorry, apologies. Sorry, passing through, passing through. And then, beep, you know, bye. <laughs> 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 it was out of the airport. And it sort of gave me a like, hmm. <laughs> I didn't have a car, but, you know, I... I'm, I'm, quicker, I'm quicker to the conveyor belt than you are. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make any difference in the end from, from a process perspective, but that's okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's not a fun, fun part of flying. I, yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. Nice anecdote. But that leads us to the next question. So what was the best process you have ever experienced? Uh, well, actually, the best pro it's not, not, not with flying or, or traveling. It's actually a company called Cool Blue in the Netherlands. They, they, that's, that's actually a sort of small Amazon, you know, kind of retail. And these guys, I don't know how to do it. They have their logistics up top, you know, 100%. In, fantastic. This is the best ever uh, logistic experience I have ever came across. I will tell you a story. So have you, <laughs> you ordered the refrigerator or a freezer, you know, for a new house. Fine. Okay. They arrived. Uh, we were there. And these guys were already waiting outside. I said, okay, Hi. And so where does this thing go? I said, uh, it does, does, does it need to go in the garage? Said, no, no, it has to go to the cellar. Oh, okay, no problem. And then, well, <laughs> no problem. So they went in with this thing, and then there was the door, and there was the fridge. And I'm like, <laughs> 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 yeah. no way. There was no way this thing could go through. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 shit. How, how, I mean, how to send it back? These guys like, okay, there's no problem. The process is very simple. You know, we just take it back. You know, you go straight on, as, as we speak, you go order a new one, which is a little bit smaller, you know, online, and then uh, we'll bring you the next one. So my customer experience was like out of this world. I'm like, what? And do I need to sign, uh, you know, as any formalities? No, 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 no. You just go ahead. How do you know? Uh, yeah, that's so fine. Yeah, that's all it but they are, they have their act together. So uh, from a logistics perspective, I, that's also why people stick with companies like that, of course. That's what I like. These these guys, you know, as soon as you have your process stuff, whatever process stuff it is, is so lean that it is like for a customer, you just go like, oh, what, what happened? No, I, I don't even have to struggle. The other way is also true. So we had a couple of weeks ago, we ordered something and it's a nightmare. Sending this thing back and uh, you get questions. Do you, don't you want 10% discount? No, yeah. I, I just want to get this, get rid of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So that's sort of the two worlds. But yeah, that's my best experience. But then, of course, like you just mentioned, lean as in going through security. You see as a process guy, you, I, I don't know, you have a nose for that. You go like, oh my God, and this is so inefficient. You know, this is so inefficient. This, I did some calculations like, okay, um, when there is, when I had to change planes, we had to go th again. This, I think this was in London through security. And There were very nervous people because we won't make the flight because there's such a long queue. And then I looked at a guy with a very red uh, backpack and I calculated the rows, right? And I'm like, okay, so what? how long does it take from there to there? It's about a minute. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six minutes ish. You know, and then we should, no, no, we will make it. And he's coming. How do you know that? Well, I calculated it. Huh? <laughs> And you oh, made it, of course. Yeah, I did the same in Frankfurt. Oh, really? that's, that's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works, yeah. Oh, I love it. So I think I don't have to ask this question anymore, but how would you describe your relationship to processes? Well, you do. You do. <laughs> I don't have the wallpaper there, but the thing is, the thing is, uh, well, that's, that's, that's how I look at stuff. And sometimes I drive people crazy. I know it's, it's like, you know, can, do you really need to go through everything? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's just, uh, it's, but it really helps. That, that's, that's my relationship with processes. I do actually, and I think this is my background as well, because I do have a slightly technical background. I was uh, in my early years, uh, you know, when I just started working, I was a Unix administrator at uh, one of the biggest research uh, institutes in the Netherlands. It's called TNO. And um, I was uh, responsible for well, getting all these things, you know, keep, keeping the stuff working, supercomputing, uh, stuff like that. And then you also learn, uh, you know, what to do, what not to do. You know, you need, uh, you, you learn sequences as in, you know, uh, dependencies, like, oh, do this first, done that, you know. So it's sort of game. I don't know. I think I grew up with that. I think that's how it worked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. That's uh, super interesting. And yeah. Then let's deep dive into UPN. For those of our listeners who have never heard about UPN before, 
What is it and how does it look like? It is just a notation, of course. It stands for Universal Process Notation, which is just a label. And the easiest way to, and from, from this whole podcast, to remember what it does and what it is, is actually answering five questions. And these five questions are, I will just name, name them. You can always rewind and listen to them back or write them down or whatever. Uh, I do have a PDF so I can send them. <laughs> but these questions is, uh, is very simple. So you, you, the first thing you ask, what happens? You know, what happens? And then, uh, I don't know, I, I, I look, I care, I take care of this or I classify incidents or whatever. Okay, why do you do that? So there's a second question, why? Oh, because I like it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so when do you do that? The third question: When when does it happen? You know, when does uh, when do you start to do that? Okay, so that's the third question, and then you, the fourth question is: So who's responsible? That's the resource, the role. Who's taking care of it? And of course, you can sort of add more things, but I come to this later. And then we have this: The fifth question is: How do you do it? You know, and then you will drive it. So basically, it is: What happens? Why do you do it? When when happens it? When does it happen? Who's responsible? Accountable, etc. And how do you do it? So answering these five questions very, very strictly on every single activity you, you create, that's the base of, of UBN. If, if you have to, that's the basic building block. And if you stick to those five questions, you already are in a good shape to build really cool process uh, diagrams. You know, there's, of course, there's more to it, but this is basically the base of, of everything. And, and then there's, there's the rules like you don't, don't over. As, you know, don't over, don't exaggerate with um, the boxes on the on the canvas. Don't throw like hundreds of boxes there. But that's just a matter of, I would almost say it's almost a skill. It's almost an art. Like you know, people yeah, can absolutely. only it so much. Uh, be clear. You know, uh, you will see very soon it is it's worth smithing. As in, like, uh, hmm, did you really think about that thing? So, for yeah. example, you see many times activities like receive package, like yeah, or a very, <laughs> a very, very awful one. Manage finance. Okay, what the hell? <laughs> manage fi- what do you mean with manage finance? In, in my trainings, I actually use the word manage in, in, a, in a very, uh, shall we say, I don't know if it's, if, I don't even know if this is allowed nowadays, but I will do it anyway. Um, do you manage your food or do you cook your food? And then a lot of male guys go like, oh, uh, I manage my food because I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so you see what I'm coming from. Managing is, is, is you know, is controlling, is, is steering, is, is sort of, you know, putting the ropes and see what's going on. That's actually managing. We try to avoid these kind of words. It is very practical. That's another, another aspect of UPN. Um, so answering those five questions, be very practical. You know, just tell me what happens. Mm-hmm. I had this, this another anecdote that actually sort of, you know, really illustrates uh, what can go wrong. I was on an assignment in South Africa for a big um, pipeline organization, uh, you know, transporting uh, all these, these fuels and whatever through pipes. And I was um, training, I think this was middle management or something, but anyway, I saw some executives. And I said, listen, let's do a game. I will divide the class in two parts. I will ask the question, can you please describe what you think your company is doing? Ah, oh, sure, easy. I said, okay, now like five minutes. And then they can, one group came back. We uh, satisfy our shareholders. Okay. <laughs> the other group came back with, we transport fuel from A to B. Mm-hmm. Said, okay, you won, you lose. And then the group with, you know, satisfying shareholders, said, no, no, blah, 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 what is that? You know, we just <laughs> said, well, the thing is, if you transport your fuel from A to B in the most efficient way, you know, cost effective, what have you, then you automatically satisfy your shareholders, right? So what is your core? Ah, oh, okay. So that's actually, also, a, n- a nice illustration how to do that and how to, how to look at things. So basically, t- don't try to be, you know, on the highest levels, even on, on very high level, you know, to be too abstract. You know, just say what you do. Well, I fly planes around, you know, I, I carry people from A to B, you know, using a plane. Because people seem to have this, you know, sort of intention to get from A to B. So, <laughs> fine. Oh, we want to make money as well. Ah, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And how how does UPN look like uh, when you map it? I know it's it's a challenge to do that on a podcast, but uh, maybe you can try to explain it. I'll try. I'll do my best. So basically, uh, imagine drawing a rectangle. Yeah. It is your activity. So it's just, it's just one box. There's no other symbols. We don't have decision symbols. So for the audience who don't don't know uh, notations, but 
you know, in, in the process world, you have loads of symbols in all kinds of cryptic thingies. We don't have that. So basically, uh, UPN has this only symbol, which is a rectangle. And that rectangle always, no exception, always depicts an activity. And activities always, no exception, start with a verb and a noun. So it's always classify incident and not I classify incident or, you know, the help desk employee classifies incident or even worse, incident management. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that's just a container. So you always have to start with a verb. So you have an, a rectangle. So envision yourself a rectangle, classify incident, verb noun. Then you answer then, why would you do that? Well, because we do this for like 10 years. No, no, no. But why? You know what? Let's not do that anymore. No, no. Because I need to understand as to, you know, why these uh, things need to be classified. Mm -hmm. Great. That's your answer. So that's your why. So you have to answer the business why. Now, here's a very... So where do you put the why? Where, where is it written or... That's the outcome. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's the outcome. That's always uh, think with the end in mind, say. So basically, why do you spend time and money on classifying incidents? Also that I know the next steps or whatever, you know, whatever your answer is. But it is always a business answer. It's not a system status. So many times you see things like, validate customer then we get a validated customer mm. yes great that's the status mm -hmm. it's just good it's okay it's not wrong but why do you do that from a business perspective well so i know i have no you know i've uh, maybe to mitigate risks oh yeah risks mitigated okay cool fine that's that sounds like a business answer but then we have only answered two uh, two questions so basically a rectangle with the activity then we have the why which i think is very important If and that's an important. attribute if you map that in a tool or uh, just uh, is it also yeah you could you could see it as an attribute yeah mm -hmm. yeah it is it is actually i will come to this later with also with respect to ai because that's that's really an interesting thing and then user stories and stuff like that um but that will come <laughs> i don't want to make things too 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 complex right now <laughs> so basically you have that activity uh, that box right with what what are you doing well classify incidents Uh, why do you do that? So that I know the next steps. Okay, cool. That's your business answer. When do you do that? When, when there's a customer call, maybe. When there's, mm -hmm. a, when there's a request. Okay, so that's your when, right? So we have now already a box with a narrow going in, depicting the when. We have an outcome, which is depicting the why. But then we still haven't answered who's responsible for that. Who's doing that, actually? Is that the system? Is that the human? Uh, are that multiple persons? So that would be the role or resources. And you stuff these resources under the activity box. So basically, you have an activity box answering the why, the when, and who's responsible. Then you already are pretty complete because you have your context. Mm -hmm. If you then want to answer how do you classify, how, do, how does that work? Well, let me show you. And then you drill down, literally drill down to the next layer. So it's a hierarchical system. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually mention that uh, before, but it is hierarchical. That's just basically uh, to avoid complexity. So basically mm -hmm. you can see a couple of boxes Hmm, that's an interesting one. I don't understand. How does it work? Well, let me show you. You drill down mm -hmm. and then you can see more details. And you can do this. You can repeat this. There's no, shall we say, academical slash mathematical method there which says, but on the first three levels, you should only see this. It depends on the complexity of the process, which doesn't mean that you shouldn't or are not, not allowed to do that. For fine, you can do that. But as long as you stick to those five questions, you are fine. You are safe. But yeah, I mean, it is, it is that, that status slash uh, business thing is, is, is a, I see this a lot. So I see also uh, all the diagrams I get sent. Many times they have no text at all on the lines. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, so why is, does this happen? So all the important information is missing, actually. So you see all the activities like uh, send email. Yeah. <laughs> why? I don't know. A validate customer. Yeah, sure. Let me have a validated customer. Yeah, sure, but why? So I'm really, really focusing on, or UPN is really focusing on building the right thing, you know, focusing on the right, uh, well, activities actually, because activities cost time and money mm -hmm. uh, to, to build the right thing. And I think that's the, that's the, in my opinion, the right starting point mm -hmm. before you go build stuff and, you know, just spend time on, on needless, uh, you know, add a lot of waste. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And um, you mentioned you have a PDF describing that. Maybe we can uh, put a link into the show notes where um, our listeners can. Yeah, I can, I can do that. I can actually, uh, uh, maybe we should, I, I'll find something for you, a link that, that actually. Yeah, exactly. You know. Put that into the show. Yeah, notes. No, that's no that's perfect. Okay, cool. And how did you come up with the idea of 
inventing UPN. Yeah, uh, well, that goes a long, I mean, a lot of people have only now just sort of heard about it, but it is actually very, very old. And very, very old is, I'm also very old, well, you know, I, I'm almost, well, I'm, not, I'm not 60, but I'm, you know, I'm still in my 50s, but it is, it is very old. So basically 20 years ago, around 2000. Three ish, you know, uh, around around that. It's it's really twenty years. It's it's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. ah, time flies and you're having fun, right? But the thing is, um, I was a consultant working for Nimbus Partners, a uh, UK based company. Their origin is actually more from quality control. They their product at the, at the time was also called Control, and it already used those boxes and lines. So we we also have these boxes and lines kind of approach at that time. And there was a certain pattern I, I discovered. So when I was sitting in one of my hotel rooms for this, you know, uh, a countless uh, amount of time that I was actually sent abroad, I looked at the diagram and then I'm like, okay, there must be something uh, similar I can, I can repeat and, and, and be able to sort of, you know, create consistency in these diagrams. Because I think it is a very important thing. It doesn't really matter which, which notation you use, as long as you're consistent um, and you know what you're talking about. That's, that's really important. So I looked at it and then went like, okay, wait a minute. This is actually always answering the why question. Hmm, that's interesting. Does, w- would it work for everything? And the answer was, yes, actually it does. Oh, cool. So the what, of course, the what we knew because we already started with a verb and noun. That was, that was a given. And then I went like, hmm, the when question. So and that's a very tricky one because the when question can also be a why outcome of, of something else. So it's, uh, you know, uh, when, why. And then that why would be the next when for the next, you know, mm-hmm. activity. That was also a pattern and it sort of worked. Um, like, okay, that really works. This is cool. Um, what about resources and roles? Well, we stuff them under the activity. Hmm. So that's actually answering who's doing it or what system are you are using? Yeah, that would, that would always work in every time. Cool. So we already had the what, the, when, the why, the when, the, the who's involved kind of question. And then the how was actually, because at that time we already had in the tool, we had already in this hierarchical approach that was actually answering always the how question. And mm-hmm. so I went like, hmm, that's interesting. So what, why, when, yeah, who, how? Let's try this again. Oh, that really works. This is so cool. And then okay. sort of went back. And then uh, this, this whole thing was a sort of a joint invention as in like, okay, we need to name it. I don't know. It's universal process notation. So I think Ian Goss invented it as in as a, as a label. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm actually not even sure who invented it. There's, there's some books he wrote, uh, but the thing was, it was during my Nimbus Partners uh, period that when when actually this whole sort of thing see, saw the daylight. <laughs> and then from that moment on, we called it UPM, but it never had as much traction as now. So which is really interesting. So it is actually very very old. Uh, I have used it like yeah, only like twenty years. I've always tried to apply it in every single role I was. So also outside Nimbus, when I, when I left Nimbus, or typical in that case, it was really helpful to, to really get to the point, to really to show, okay, why are you spending time and money to this, you know, on this process, on this activity? Well, we don't know. Well, then don't do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> and that really helped to, to actually give context to a lot of initiatives in, in businesses because that's actually the whole thing. We spent a lot of time well, of course, automating things. Oh, we need to have an, a, a workflow for that. Yeah, sure. Wait, time, time out, you know. Um, why? Well, because, you know, customers want to, okay, cool. So you have a sort of an answer. Don't we have anything similar already? Mm-hmm. We don't know. Um, yeah, okay, let's have a look. So let, let, let's add some context. I think I use, uh, not during this podcast, but I use contextual mapping as well a lot. So I want to see the context. I get a lot of diagrams sent to me hey, can you sort of convert this to UPN? And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I have no idea what you try to sort of communicate to me here. What is this thing all about? Well, this is the CPQ process. Whoa, whoa, CPQ? Pro- uh, what do you mean? What, why does it exist? That's like, why, why does it exist? <laughs> so yeah. my, my, mean, my mean questions when I get uh, into a workshop, one of my mean questions would be, so where do we start? I said, well, this is your company, right? Yeah. Why does your company exist? And if you cannot answer that question, then, then you do have quite a challenge, I would say. Yeah. And then, of course, you drill down to, to ask the same question over and over again. So I'm, I'm also a Lean Six Sigma guy. So basically, uh, those why questions are not totally you know, random. They, 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 they do have a meaning. They do have a reason. <laughs> so I try to answer, to get as much why as possible until people start to beat me up. 
<laughs> yeah. Very good. So you started um, inventing UPN, I, I think, more or less in parallel to BPMN 2.0? Yeah, I think because there was a time, and, and you remember that as well, of course, uh, is, is when, okay, we had U, UML, we had you know, all these initiatives to see, okay, we need to make things more digestible for people, for mm. normal people, yeah. <laughs> as, as business people. And then, uh, yeah, BPMN came up. Um, and I was very interested in BPMN in the beginning as well. I mean, okay, this is at least there's a standard because everybody was sort of longing for a standard, right? And yeah. UPC, you know, the RS, same thing. But the thing was, they all seem to have this sort of more technical background, as in like, yeah, we need to, in the end, we need to automate something. So therefore, we need to be very rigorous. There need to be a lot of rigor in the notation so that you don't sort of, you know, shoot yourself in the foot after, after maybe a decision point or whatever. And that's, I think, the big difference uh, if you look at UPN versus BPMN. It's not a matter of versus. It is a matter of it's a contextual versus more technical approach, yeah. I would say. Now, you can, of course, with BPN, you can do contextual stuff, you know, omitting all the symbols. Fine, I can sort of get to UPN-ish, you know, uh, approach. Yeah. What is a very typical thing um, <laughs> are swim lanes. So you see um, in, in BPN uh, the swim lane and construct with all the activities and, and handovers and what have you. And you don't see that in UPN. Now, the, I think the main reason not to use swim lanes in UPN is flexibility. The thing is, if you have a swim lane, uh, imagine you have all the roles as a, as a horizontal, you know, sort of swim lane. And I don't know, you have 15 or so or six roles or, or resources on the, yeah. uh, on the left. And then suddenly something changes, and then you have to really start to move things around. Uh, sometimes that can be quite painful. Uh, as we, in UPN, put the resources under the activities, you can actually shift them anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, because the activity and the role always go together. So they are stick together. Of course, sometimes you have to change the, you know, the, the roles and, and the resources, which is fine. That doesn't mean that we don't support swim lanes, as in UPN. UPN can be done with swim lanes, but mm -hmm. it is just more flexible without swim lanes. And that's pretty much the same, the, the, the only reason. Now, sometimes people ask me, yeah, but then I cannot see the handoffs in UPN mm -hmm. because it's very tough. Well, you can report on them. It is maybe from a visual point of view, maybe not the most clear because you can... I, I tend to look first at the process. Mm -hmm. I don't, well, I was going to say I don't give a shit about resources. It's not completely <laughs> pure. But I don't, I really don't care about functions and resources because functions and resources and structure many times, uh, shall we say, stand in the way of, of lean process uh, modeling, right? Because we have this sort of, yeah, but you need to really include this resource. Mm -hmm. well, why would I do that? Yeah, but it's very important. No, no do away with the resources. I just want to see the activities. In order to cut a tree, what do we need? Well, well, first I have to think about why. Well, I need wood for whatever reason. Okay, cool. We are clear about the wood. Now I go to a forest and, you know, find a tree. Yes. Are you going to cut this thing with your bare hands? Probably not. So you need a tool, a resource, whatever, you know, an axe or a chainsaw. Well, if you need a chainsaw, then you need maybe also safety measures and risk mitigation and what have you. So there's a whole bunch of things that sort of come together. The point is that actually I look only at the process first, mm -hmm. right? Go find the right forest, find the right tree. You know, does it comply to my whatever I need, oak or, or, or birch or whatever? And then you just go on. And basically that's the, the, the way I look at things. And then only then I look at the resources. I go, okay, what do we need? Oh, um, now maybe a carpet, no, a carpet, not yet, but maybe a lumberjack. Oh yeah, cool. Lumberjack, that really works. What does the lumberjack needs? Well, maybe an axe. Is the axe sharp enough? I don't know. Does he, does he have the right axe? But then you're already into, shall we say, the tooling mm -hmm. and the resourcing, and you are already forgetting about, and why are we cutting this tree again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe a very <laughs> a favorite of me is, uh, I also use this in my trainings every, well, not every day, but if, if I give a training is, okay, so you're all doing all this tree cutting and stuff and fantastic, you know, we are really happy working my, our asses off. And then we climb in tree number, I don't know, 55. And then we look around and we look, oh shit, wrong forest. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I like UPN so much because it really gives you the context. So you have to, so every now and then you have to climb the tree as in go up and go look around and go, okay, we're still doing the right thing. Oh, this is cool. We can continue now. And that's what I really, really love. And it's a very broad thing. Uh, you could do this with other 
methodologies, I think, as well. But this is so many times forgotten. People are jumping straight into details, and, and which, of course, is fine. If, it, if, if you are a developer or if you are a business analyst on, on details, perfect. But you have to, you know, understand the context. Yeah, that's actually how it. Uh, yeah, how I how I see it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's uh, super interesting. And if if I now think, oh yeah, I would love to have a closer look, and I would love to try it out. How can I start? Is there a tool or documentation? How do I get started? There's a tool. <laughs> <laughs> there's this platform now. Elements.cloud is, of course, the the, the original uh, founders of Elements.cloud are also the original founders of Nimbus Partners and therefore UPN. So that's definitely a fantastic resource. So by all means, uh, visit Elements.cloud. But there's also Score, uh, which is uh, which are also two guys uh, previously working for Nimbus Partners. Fantastic tool. So I think Elements.cloud and Score currently are the best tools if you want to look at tools to sort of you know work with UPN. Now you could go like, yeah, you know, I have PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah, sure. You can <laughs> you can create boxes and lines in PowerPoint, but it is just it's a just it's just a drawing. And then I must actually sort of go a little bit further. And I cannot speak for score, but I can speak for elements of cloud. It's so much more than just a drawing. It's a it's a, it's a database. It's there's relationships. Uh, I can report, analyze. You can totally knock yourself out. Resource reports, what what have you? You can do so many things. Cyproc reports. There's this so many things you can do there. But that's because it's a database. And uh, of course, when people look at screens, they see the the first thing they see is a graph. You know, is a diagram. Oh, that's a cool drawing tool. <laughs> and I go like, no, 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 no. It's not a drawing tool. <laughs> The methodology, but it's so much more than that. And what you see in, in practice, and that's really, really funny to see, is uh, also in the Salesforce market, I must say, is oh, it's so easy to configure your, your CRM stuff. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Like so many other software tools out there, it's so easy to configure. But what about documentation? How have you any an architecture? Have you any have you thought it through? Well, no, answer is probably not. And then that really comes in handy uh, to have an overview which sticks around, which is version controlled, governed, which actually can tell you, which can answer the following questions like, if I change anything in my business process, would that impact my technology? Probably yes. The other way around, this new technology, AI, would that impact my business? Yeah. How would you tell? Well, that's how you tell because they are linked and um, that's actually very important. So everybody who thinks doing stuff with Visio or PowerPoint, I'm so sorry, it's cool to communicate, communicate uh, you know, a great process, but it is yeah. not really, it's not, it's not a process-driven kind of, you know, approach. It is, it is, it is. It's nice to start with, but I wouldn't even start there because we also have this, uh, at least in elements, we have this free, you know, start. So you can, you can create a free, free, free um, sort of drawing. But it's actually drawing because it's only, uh, I think it's only enabling the the drawing part of, of elements. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not using it that much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anything you can at least learn. But it is you can also create disasters with elements if you want to, because it isn't it doesn't enforce you to to actually stick to the verb noun and, and yeah. answering the why. I actually had I, uh, when you start with elements, you have this little thing called why the, the text why on the lines. Mm -hmm. So I had once a customer who came in, so this is this annoying word why on the lines. Can you can you just Get rid of this, and I'm like, okay, um, <laughs> we have a conversation here. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's, and is there also training available? Yeah, 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 yeah. We have, we have actually uh, a thing called Academy. Uh, so okay. basically, Elements of Cloud has a lot of support and training. It's also live support. It's not one of those, you know, like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, fine. Just let's just wait for days before you get an answer. There's, there's live people behind uh, behind the chat, and that's not don't. I mean, if you, if you do, even if you don't have a license, a paid license, you know, you, you, you still get supported. So that's, that's really cool. But the, the academy, I think, is a great way to, uh, to start because it really teaches you, the, you know, the ins and outs and the, the, mm -hmm. the basics. I would say that PDF you just mentioned uh, with, with answering the five, I, I would start there. I mean, I would just, I, even if you don't use elements or even score, you know, it doesn't really matter. If you start to think about those five questions, mm -hmm. I think that is, that's, that's the big difference here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, to give that's, another, that's, that's, that's agnostic. 
Yeah. Okay. That, that's super. And to give another example, what, what was your favorite UPN related project? Actually, I'm doing, as we speak, I'm, I'm actually right in the middle of it. And I will tell you a little bit about it. Uh, there's, of course, an NDA. I cannot uh, reveal anything <laughs> there, but the, I will tell you a little bit the uh, sort of the, the thing I'm working on. So imagine there's some standard processes for implementing uh, whatever, you know, Salesforce is implementing. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a Salesforce related project. So that, that, that's, that's, not a, not, that's not a secret. What you see is that, and that's, that's a very interesting uh, sort of use case, you, you're familiar with user stories, right? So basically, when, when, when you create user stories in order to you know, create a system uh, or solution, uh, these stories, you know, uh, let me, for the audience who doesn't know what a user story is, you know, it's actually basically a certain format, SA, and then you say your resource, so SA uh, Lumberjack, I want to uh, cut wood or cut a tree so that I get quality wood or whatever. So basically, you know, as a role, I want to do something so that I, and that's, that's basically a very short user story. Now, the fun part of these five questions is that these are actually tiny user stories already, because if I make sure that I have text on the lines and everything, all the details are there. And the project I'm currently working on is, and that's really cool, is we call this Elements GPT. Obviously, we do stuff with AI as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is actually able to derive user stories from your UPN diagrams. Now, then that, and it's, it's, I would say it's a prerequisite to have text on the line. So answering the whys, answering the whens, that must be in there. Otherwise, the AI goes like, like, like a human. I have no mm -hmm. clue what you're talking about. So what is this all about? So you have to have some flesh on the bone as we say it and what you then see is that the ai engine can not just generate proper user stories out of your diagrams which is really helpful for developers it actually adds more flesh to the bone so i will give you one example so we have this um this very tiny uh, activity called i think it's called combine line items for an invoice or something like or for a quote so Basically, you have a lot of products which are similar uh, that need to be combined so that you get the output is then a uh, more smooth, well, more, shall we say, summarized version of, of, of what you are buying. So basically, it's, it's to make things uh, a little bit more simple. That's, that whole idea about making things simple is not described anywhere. So when I generated the story, auto-generated the story, mm -hmm. AI engine came back with so that the customer has a smoother experience. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Because now finally you see that AI, you know, can really add value. Now you still need an expertise kind of view on it because you need to see, okay, does it make sense? Yeah, this actually does make sense. And so our challenge as an elements of cloud is to see uh, the 2080 rule, you know, the 8020 rule. Where can, so are the answers AI is giving us always good or are mm -hmm. sometimes bad suggestions? Well, that's something to play with. But that's the most coolest uh, UPN project uh, I'm currently doing uh, because UPN is required. So there's a reason, a real reason now mm -hmm. to actually stick to those five rules, uh, to those five questions. I'm already sort of testing and experimenting with, in this case, chat GPT to see, could we even validate if, the, if we are talking about a real, you know, UPN diagram, yes or no? So you can actually give it all the rules and say, listen, given, you know, blah, 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 blah. Is this a valid diagram? And then the engine comes back like, this is not a valid diagram because you have not started with a verb or whatever, you know, stuff like that. But, and that's really, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a process. That, that's what excites me. Well, there's more things that excites me, but this is so cool. This is like, wow, wow. You see, I can see it. You know, if, if, I, if, if you see it, you just go like, oh my God, this is so cool. And then you will certainly real, realize that it, it really, really makes sense to start using this sort of hierarchical approach contextual approach to actually build the right thing because that's what we constantly see happening and you have seen i'm, I'm sure you have seen disasters in your life where you go like oh my god you know why did you create it like that you know it's uh, yeah well we didn't know sometimes you just see things you go like oh my you know well one small example i recently get this really crazy idea to put wi-fi modules in my aircos uh, ecosystems yeah but airco suppliers are not there their origin is not it is not wi-fi it's not internet so there's a big gap between how they perceive you yeah. know home automation <laughs> uh <laughs> it's just like <laughs> you just go like okay okay fine um two different worlds uh very bad experience <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, so you're also experimenting with AI. That's... Shall we say in a very uh, strict and rigorous way, because I don't want to get into the trap of where AI sort of suggests things and people go like, yeah, but you know, AI said it, so it must be true. Or it must be the, the right thing to do because sometimes it suggests things where you go like, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work. That's not how it works. So we need to, the prompting is the most important, right? So the, generating those prompts, uh, that's actually, we have a whole team uh, working on that to actually think about what's the best way, you know, what's the contextual way. So as elements of cloud is a Salesforce related uh, sort of solution. Um, now you can use it also without Salesforce, of course, if you just want to stick to European mapping. But the thing is, we know about your configuration in Salesforce so because we analyze that. And that information combined with the, shall we say, the diagramming, that really makes makes the whole solution quite quite interesting. Yeah, ah, that's that's a super cool use case. And I, I'm currently thinking about um, hosting another episode on AI, how to use ChatGPT yeah. to rethink processes and how to prompt and, and so on, just independent from a tool, but uh, also thinking about how to yeah, import process models into ChatGPT to get really process-specific answers there. Yeah, I think we are very close to that. I mean, that's another aspect of you. It wasn't there before because people were asking, so why the hell would they use UPN? Because, you know, well, I guess we are going to a, an era where actually we only have to think about the whys, so only about building the right stuff, which I think is a great thing. So we don't are you know, stuck in, in details and that you, we can't do this because we can't automate this. Or because of the automation is like this, you just have to work like that. No, uh, I, mean, I just want to look at it from a business perspective. And I think AI is going to really help there. It, it, that really makes a difference, yeah. Yeah. Doing all that nitty gritty detail stuff, right? As in, like, uh, this is how you would create a flow. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> ah, cool. Before we uh, arrive at our final destination, let's take a step back and uh, just to apply all your overall experience uh, to rethink processes. What would your three top recommendations to our listeners be to? to rethink process, to get to more human-centric approach, maybe by using UPN as well. But uh... I would not start with, well, I would definitely recommend UPN, obviously, because I'm heavily biased. But the thing is, <laughs> I started, when I sort of, uh, it sounds like almost like dramatic, but when I saw the light, <laughs> <laughs> I read a, a book a long, long time ago, a book called uh, Beyond Reengineering, Michael Hammer. So Beyond Reengineering, um, I don't know if the audience knows Michael Hammer, but there was this, this Reengineering uh, concept in the I think it was in the eight, no seventies eighties or something I'm I'm forgetting this yeah but he uh, he and uh, Champy so another author came up with this this reengineering the business and this was then sort of abused to lay, lay off a lot of people because people looked at it like okay we need to these processes need to be far more efficient and that was a pretty rigorous sort of approach or at least it was used that way and then he wrote a second book Beyond Reengineering mm -hmm. and that book sort of got me. I would definitely recommend to look it up. So Beyond Reengineering from Michael Hammer. Mm -hmm. He doesn't live anymore. He, 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 a couple of years ago, I think yeah. he died. Uh, but the thing is, um, that book really inspired me uh, to, to suddenly think about, oh, wait a minute. No, it's not about automation. It's not about uh, doing fancy things with flows. It's about value. It's about creating value for the customer. And the customer can be an internal and an external customer of you, yeah. right? So basically, that's, that's what it is all about. And he really depicts it very nicely in that book. So that that's, would be my first recommendation. Go and look up that book because I think it's a really cool thing. Now, there's a zillion other books I could recommend, but this is the book I uh, think is, is really cool. And then there's this uh, second thing, and that's practicality. You know, be practical. Don't be too... Don't stick around in, you know, like, like in a specialism. I, I, I totally get that. So both my, my daughter is a doctor and my son is doing a surgeon operation assistant study, something like that. Uh, th there's a very, very focused, uh, shall we say, skills and, and, and things. Uh, I think as a process guy, you need to be pretty broad. Uh, you need to be holistic. So basically, you need to step out, step back a little bit, you know, climb the tree and look around and see, okay, what was this all about? So building the right thing is, I think, uh, a very, very important thing. That's, that's at least what I, I, I have learned all those years. I was also in the, in the early days when I was still very young. <laughs> 
I was uh, really focusing on on all this. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. Yeah, but nobody's going to use it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that would be my, my second thing. And the third thing is uh, just do it. Just, 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 you know, whatever tool it is, but rethink those, 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 uh, those questions. Definitely with UPN, but just try it out. Uh, then you'll get stuck with, yeah, but how does this really relate with BP men? Because I'm such a BP men guy, or I'm such an EPC guy, which is, which is totally fine. Uh, or I'm such a swim lane guy, which is sort of fine. You can always, you know, can always embed those notations inside UPN. So basically, you can, I can totally imagine where you have a, an activity called, uh, I don't know, classify incident, and you might have a BP men diagram that actually totally, you know, lays it out. Great. Then just use that. You're like, oh, can you do that? Yes, you can. Is it allowed? Yeah, why not? As long as it is in the right context, as long as you're building the right thing. And then, of course, later on, build the thing right. That's that's another thing. So yeah. It'll be more efficient. But that would be my three recommendations, yes. Yeah, cool. Thank you. That's that's super interesting. And where can our listeners learn more about your activities? How can they contact you? Well, I'm definitely on LinkedIn. So if they want to really sort of get a sort of one-to-one, -one, uh, more than happy to do so. So definitely look me up on LinkedIn. I think that's the, that's the quickest. Obviously, you can go to Elements of Cloud, where I work. So Elements of Cloud is a company based in, uh, well, the headquarters in San Francisco, but the majority sits in the UK. And we have our development tree, uh, team actually in Ukraine, in, in Lviv. Okay. And we are pretty spread out. So it's, a, it's, it's like it's a pretty virtual company. Obviously, we do have we do have an office. <laughs> but as you can see on my back, I mean, I'm 100 dedicated to Elements of Cloud because I just love to work uh, with the guys. You know, it's and of course it's UPN, but it is very exciting stuff. But I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a much broader than that. Uh, I'm also very concerned about you know climate change yeah. and what have you know all, all all these things. So I'm I'm definitely a little bit more than that. But the thing is, you have to have a passion in your life. And in my, in my case, that's, that's Elements of Cloud. So Elements of Cloud is definitely a website I would <laughs> definitely look up. Uh, even if you're not Salesforce related, you know, go there and have a look. Uh, I think it will, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be uh, surprising what you can do with it. And if you have any ideas, you know, please do, do, let, you know, do share because that yeah. really helps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that offer. And um, beyond UPN, um, what, I don't know, tool, method, expert would you recommend to me? and to our listeners to have a closer look at, to get new ideas on how to rethink processes. I totally didn't mention it. But the number one thing I would, right now, in this current yeah. time, as in all, what, all these things are happening, please go and learn system thinking. <laughs> okay. System thinking is so important. I mean, that's that the, the I don't know how it is in... in uh, but are you, Mirko, you live in Germany or in... in yeah. Uh, in I Germany. live in Germany, okay. Yeah. So... Every, I, sh I should probably know that there's this polarization going on. There those, uh, we, we, in the Netherlands, we call it hully zully, which is like they say, oh, damn, or that. If you start to learn about system thinking, you suddenly realize, oh, wait a minute, it is slightly more subtle than, than, than you would yeah. think, right? And I think system thinking, uh, I do have also a book. Uh, I'm not sure where I have the book, but probably somewhere on the back there. Yeah, thinking and systems from, yeah, Donella Meadows. So Donella Meadows, uh, I can send you the link. Yeah, that's I think the base uh, to to learn it, and it is. I would almost go like uh, as far as I would say. Can 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 we please on schools, you know, sort of get get that system thinking thing in there because I think that's one of the most important things right now. So we get more. Not everybody have to be has to be become smart or something, but it's more to to avoid all this polarization and, mm -hmm. and you know all this stuff. I think that's that's a really really interesting uh, topic. Yeah, definitely. So if, if <laughs> I don't know who's in my network the best system thinker, or there's a couple of people there, but but yeah, fine. That that, that that's really that I wouldn't recommend. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. Okay, I put that on my uh, waiting list. There is yeah. already a long list of topics <laughs> to have a closer look at. It's, yeah, it sounds uh, very interesting. Yeah, Thank you yeah. for that recommendation. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I don't know if you realized we already landed the aircraft and yeah, every single um, landing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How would you describe your flight experience with just three words? A very nice flight, as in uh, a very natural uh, flight flow, which which I love. Um, one of the things uh, I do during flights is sit back and relax. Like the captain is always saying that, but I really do that. I never ever take on my laptop. In, in, a, in whatever flight, never, ever. I just sit back. For me, this is a kind of Zen moment, okay. uh, especially if you have to go a nice flight to, to San Francisco or whatever. 
uh, I do sometimes look at the movie or something, but uh, I, I'm a reader, so I, I read a lot. Uh, that's what I that's what I do. But I never <laughs> sounds very strange, but I never put any time in work or something. I, I always uh, have something else. Well, depends. I mean, reading a book about system thinking is sort of work related, but I also like it. So I think the flight is is uh, my experience uh, is, in, and especially this flight is is a very smooth flight. I think all the things uh, I'm passionate about uh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pass by i hope for you too but the thing is uh, yeah that's what i uh, what i uh, what i see yeah cool oh uh, walter thank you so much for being my guest on this flight it was super interesting to learn more about upn and way beyond that i'm i'm already looking forward to meeting you in person at the new process conference <laughs> so <laughs> first time that i'm going to mention it here uh we started planning um having a physical meeting of the people we all know from virtual meetings yeah and yeah i'm, I'm, I'm and, super excited then I mean, yeah that, so, I, saw, I saw your announcement actually and and i'm really whatever happens i want to be there i, I yeah, really want yeah, to yeah. make sure we're going to there. share more yeah, yeah. Yeah. So location is not fixed yet, but uh, maybe when this episode goes online, we already have something more to tell you. Have you ever thought about Aachen? Um, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but maybe it's close to Aachen. <laughs> we'll see. Is also okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Walter, sure. thank you so much. Have a yeah. great day. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Let's recap today's new process inspiration. Wow, now I know what UPN is all about. That was super interesting, and I really like the lean and clean approach of UPN. And I think it's super easy to start with these five questions to get all the information you need for the activities in your processes. So what happens? Why does it happen? When does it happen? How to do it? And who is responsible? I think... It's super cool to use these questions to map your processes and then transfer the information into the attribute of the respective activity. I'm a big fan of methodologies like this that work step by step to create a process design. And I also like his definition of the why. So the business why. It's not on the emotional level of a process purpose, but maybe this can also be reflected to explain how an activity contributes to the overall purpose of a process. I'll think about that. So I think it's super interesting that element.cloud integrates with Salesforce. So that's a cool benefit for all Salesforce users out there to have a direct connection between both tools and get documentation created in elements based on what you have configured in Salesforce, if I understood that right. But as Walter said, Elements of Cloud can also be used without Salesforce. And there are also other tools out there to map process in UPN. Or you can even do it on paper if you like to, just by following these five questions. So in my opinion, UPN really supports a human-centric BPM approach with its simplicity and clarity. And I would totally recommend to take a look at it as an alternative approach to even simplified BPM 2.0 which, as you know, is not really my favorite notation due to the complexity and employees don't understand full-blown BPMN, even if you use simplified version. So you'll find all the links Walter mentioned to learn more about UPN in the show notes. And to give you an outlook, there are a number of interesting expert interviews in the pipeline. I'm planning to explore even more ways to rethink processes. So stay tuned. But for now, thank you very much for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye and auf Wiedersehen. You've been listening to the New Process Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode for more tools, methods, and best practices to rethink your process and push it to the next level. Next level. Thank you for listening. Before you leave, in the interview, Walter and I already talked about the New Process Conference, which was one of the topics I was working on during the last week's after my vacation, I, I can feel that there is a strong need to meet people in person again. That's why we have kicked off the planning for the new process conference, which will be an experience to meet other BPM enthusiasts and to get new ideas to rethink processes. So hopefully we can meet there in person too. To not miss the latest news, just stay tuned and listen to the upcoming episodes of the new process podcast or simply subscribe to my newsletter at 
newproslab.com slash update. Thank you much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.